Welcome back to another video on how to program the HP Prime graphing calculator. Um, my voice is a bit sore from this weekend. Uh, I was a bit um, sick, so um, if it sounds a little different from what you're used to hearing, um, that's the reason why. Anyway, I'd like to start this video by going over some of the um, syntax when we write a program on the HP Prime. So we'll go ahead and look at a program that we wrote in the last video. Um, in which we implemented Newton's method. So here's the source code in its entirety and um, let me go over just what some of the commands do and of course um, how to properly format our, um, our code. So the word export here refers to whether or not our program is going to be um, accessible by the user. If I were to leave out the word export, then Newt becomes a, a um, program which other programs can access, but the user would not be able to access it. So by exporting Newt, that allows my user, or the user of the graphing calculator, to actually type in N-E-W-T on the command line to run this program. Then every program starts and ends with a begin and an end. We declare our local variables here. They are separated by commas and every uh, command line essentially ends with a semicolon. So as, as you notice here in every single one of these lines um, a semicolon is needed. Now <clears throat> on the actual graphing calculator there is a way to store values into variables. So for example, if I want to store 1 into a variable, I can press 1, use the menu key store, and then type in alpha x, to store, in this case, I, I type t, but alpha x, and one, the value 1 gets stored into the variable x. Um, that is also accessible through the combination of shift and e, e, x. So we can save two, for example, into the variable t. <clears throat> now, if you are creating a program, say, on a PC, uh, it's very hard to get this arrow um, character. And so, uh, alternately, what we could do, alternatively, uh, we can use the colon equals to um, store values into variables which we create. So that's what you see here, and that's how you store values. Now, when a, a program is, is uh, compiled, so in all the formulas that we see here, all of these are going to um, become evaluated before they are stored into, say, in this case, x old. Okay? Now, when we go down to this line here, we're doing a symbolic calculation where we're taking the derivative of our function and so we have to use a, a sort of a hack, if I may, in order to get um, the derivative and then create a formula that will then be stored into the built-in variable f0. And I'll talk more about this, uh, maybe not in this video, um, but maybe in future videos, on how to do um, CAS operations within a program. Okay, um, beyond that, that's really it for syntax as far as uh, this particular program is concerned. Uh, like I said, <clears throat> if we want to do um, computer algebra um, operations, we have to handle that in a very specific way. Generally speaking, when we write a program, though, it's considered to be a program that is essentially run in the home view. Um, there is an equivalent CAS program, computer algebra program, where we're essentially, you know, writing a program that does all of the things that we would normally do in the CAS view, the computer algebra system view. Um, and again, that's not something that I'm going to um, discuss in detail in this video, but uh, perhaps in fu future videos. Um, let's take a look at how we could modify this program now so that we don't have to hard code things like the tolerance um, for our guess. So again, this is Newton's method, and what I'd like to be able to do 
is to enable my user, or myself actually, to enter in things like my function, or uh, changing you know, the tolerance, the maximum number of iterations, and our initial guess. Uh, I'm not going to type out the actual code uh, in this video. Instead, I'll just show you the, um, the actual code itself. <clears throat> so here's the actual code. Um, I'm still using Newt as the name of my program, but here's how things differ a little bit. So in this particular version, um, I still am using the same local variables, but I've introduced something new here. I've introduced a capital N, and this will be my uh, variable that stores the maximum number of iterations. And F here is going to um, serve as the variable that stores my function. Now, I have not actually initialized F to be anything, and so um, the way the HP Prime creates a new local variable, it always sort of defaults to uh, an initial value 0. So f will actually initially be just the number 0, but of course we can um, freely change the contents of f um, however we please. What's new in this particular program is this command called input, and I'll go over the syntax in just a bit. But it enables me to create a graphical interface in which my user can then enter their function, and all those other parameters. And <clears throat> um, I mentioned this a little earlier, but down here we have um, a cast command. So uh, cast is basically a way of saying, hey, the next thing that I want to do is actually a symbolic calculation that I normally would have to use the cast view in order to, um, to do this. So what we do is we pass the cast command just a string containing what we would normally type in the cast view screen. So again, this is the home screen and this is the cast view screen where we do all of our symbolic manipulation here. So I'm just going to clear all that up because it's, it's not really important to this particular video. Um, what did we do slightly differently? Well, <clears throat> rather than using a while loop there, what I've done is I've created a for loop so I'm going to basically iterate all the way up to, at most, the uh, maximum num number of iterations plus one. And if I happen to um, be, with be within my tolerance, so down here, then I'll just break out of the loop. Okay? And then I've added at the very bottom this extra command called edit list. And this is a way to uh, make use of the graphical interface that's already built into the HP Prime. Um, and then it'll enable me to actually see the list in um, a nice um, interface. Okay, so let's first take a look at what this program does when we run it, and then I'll talk about the input command. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my old newt function, and oops, let's go ahead and rename it to, say, newt2. And then we'll create a new a new function. We'll use um, newt again. So n e w t with the inner key. Um, ignore this. Your particular firmware probably won't show this. Um, so here it is. Um, now, like I said, I'm not going to type everything over again. So let's. Instead of hitting the delete, let's just hit shift clear to get rid of all that. We'll go ahead and copy this source code. And just paste it into our emulator. Let's hit the check button, make sure everything got copy and pasted correctly. So now let's go ahead and run this. Okay. So here's this nice interface that we get from using the input command. And it prompts me for um, my function, and I need to surround my function in uh, single quotes. This is uh, the calculator's um, symbolic or formula object type. 
So if you surround things in sing single quotes, um, that's how you can create a symbolic object or an algebraic object. So uh, let's let's go ahead and do x squared. And since we are interested in, in this case, let's see what the square root of 31 um, is approximately equal to. I'm going to leave the initial guess as 1. The error is, is 0 0.0001 and only allow this to go up to a maximum of 100 iterations. So after we enter in our, our uh, input, hit the OK button. And this is what we see for the output. We see our initial guess. And then here's after the first step of Newton's method, we get 16. And, and then 8.9. And then finally, it looks like square root of 31 is about 5.5677, yada, yada, yada. OK, so that was a kind of a nice update of a program. Let's go ahead and talk about the source uh, in the few minutes that we have left in this video. So this new, this input command, there are actually um, a couple of ways we can use input. Um, you could call input just by simply having input and then within parentheses the variable name and it gives you a very rudimentary input screen. Um, so let's see that again with Newt. Okay. So instead of you know the prompts and stuff that we see here, we basically just see the variable name. Now the next <coughs> version of input is one where you have your variable followed by the title. So the title I used here is Newton's method. That's down here, Newton's method. Don't know if you can see the cursor. Uh, that, that's the title of our input screen followed by the prompt for that variable and any help text for that variable and then the default value for that variable. Now, I actually have one, two, three, four different inputs for this particular input screen. And so if you have multiple values that you want your user to enter in that same screen, then instead of having a single variable, we could have a list of variables followed again by the title. Um, and I should actually have a comma here after this title. So hopefully that didn't cause too much of an issue and it might have actually been, uh, let's, let's exit out of here. Let's double check. Um, yeah, there is a comma here. I don't know why I didn't have a comma up there. Anyway, um, so after the title we have a list of prompts. So what exactly is a prompt? That's the f of x equals and the guess equals, the error equals, those are the prompts. And we have, after that, a list of help text. So down here is my help text. Enter the function surrounded by single quotes. And if I change down to guess, enter the initial guess, enter the tolerance, and so on. And then instead of a single default value like we have here, we have a list of default values. So that's how we use the input command. Now the input command also returns a value. It returns one if we hit OK or enter after inputting our values. And it returns a zero if we were to hit cancel or escape. And in other words, if we you know, don't want to continue inputting in, in values. So for example, if I hit escape, it input will return zero and in my program because of the if input syntax there. Okay. Now if input does return one, then in this code, it proceeds to finish up with setting f1 equal to whatever it was that we entered in for f, our formula. So if I go to my sim view, here's my formula that was saved in f1. Um, we executed a cast command that creates f0. And what was f0? It was x minus the original fun uh, formula for f divided by the derivative. Um, and it's got a kind of a crazy syntax for it, but it all works out to be correct. Um, <clears throat> Our values were stored in list one. So here's the list. If you hit shift, uh, the number seven, you get your um, screen that shows all of the built-in lists. And we use L1, hit edit, and then we can get that list view there. And that's exactly what this command does in our program. Okay. Um, so that's it. Um, I'd like to end this video by saying that there's actually yet another way we could create this program to enable user input. But uh, time's up, so uh, we'll save that for uh, our next video. Thanks for watching, and catch you guys next video.